What's up, ladies and gentlemen? This is our brand new NBA podcast presented by Apollo Media called Zero Gravity. Dun, dun, dun. Sticking with the space theme, I am your host, Stone. I am here with my guy, Dex. What's up, y'all? We're just going to have some fun. We're going to talk some ball. We got a little over a week now under our belts in the NBA season. It's oh. already been chaotic and... Uh, this year's already been insane. Like I, everything about this year is just fucking weird, man. Like, <laughs> as most people say about the NBA, all the talking heads, NBA is not just a nine month sport. It is a twelve month year round sport. The drama ensues all of the time. We had the Damian Lillard drama from the end of last season till I don't even know when that trade happened, but when it happened, I think everyone in our group chat was just saying, "Thank God." finally we're free <laughs> it's it's over i've been getting then, damian lillard updates against my will for months <laughs> and then maybe a week or two before that we had the, the james harden daryl Morey drama which we'll get into later in this pod but it just never stopped and then the nba season started there was no break no break never a break and oh my god the nba season started so <laughs> so poorly for my my houston rockets um, yes yeah. but <laughs> <laughs> yeah so but. to preface this most people on this podcast other than myself will be houston rockets fans if you don't like that i'm sorry that that was not their choice they grew up in that city they were given that team <laughs> i can't help them much like they can't help me because i'm a dallas mavericks fan so i just want to get that out of the way for listeners and viewers on youtube we're a texas we're a texas basketball podcast all right well except for the spurs we don't really care about the spurs I, I care a lot about the Spurs, actually. I hate them that fucking much. Like, well. <laughs> I, I want nothing but bad things for them, and I think about it constantly. That's fair. That's fair. But uh, Texas basketball, I've been doing a blog each, every, each and every day with Rockets, Spurs, and Mavericks, Texas basketball write-ups, little game write-ups the night before, kind of take you through that and do the top performers. But before we get into it, Zero Gravity is brought to you by Zing Zing. If you haven't already tried the Blazing Bloody Mary mix, we've been housing it down at Apollo <laughs> HOU. It's uh, it's become a problem. Saturday mornings, you want to wake, wake up and watch some college football? Well, guess what? Blazing Bloody Mary mix will get you just fired up for the day. It's a little cold. It's cold. It'll keep you warm. The Blazing Bloody Mary mix is, is incredible. And then we're also brought to you by the Celebrity Mint. Follow them on Instagram at the Celebrity Mint. They do these gold tokens like Mike Tyson, I think, is dropping at the end of November. That's going to be sick. They've got a, a bunch of other cool names. They've got Ric Flair and, and some other people that we can't tell you about. But these Stay celebrity tuned. men, follow them on Instagram. They're huge. They're just awesome. They're they're our best friends. That's what I'm going to say. <laughs> Shout out to Celebrity Men. Shout out to Zing Zang. I'm, I'm honestly not a Bloody Mary guy, personally. But they have some other like cocktail in a can beverages that I yes. rock with hard. Like their whiskey sour, delicious. <laughs> I've got to get into that. The whiskey sour sounds delightful. It's so good. <laughs> I, I, like I said, not a Bloody Mary guy. They do make the Bloody Mary in a can situation, but they do. I'm not they a got... I'm not a tomato based alcohol person. I'm so not the... either. But the bloody the blazing Bloody Mary, it does it for me. I don't know. It just does it for me. <laughs> but yeah, but, the rest of Zing Zang stuff is great. So shout out to the Zang responsibly. Zang responsibly. So we're gonna try something out. We're gonna do a segment one, full court press. This is easy. This is easy. The NBA Cup or NBA in season tournament, I don't know what they're calling it. I, I have NBA.com pulled up here with mm. frequently asked questions because really no one knows what's going on here. Um, it's called the NBA in season tournament, but they're competing for the NBA cup. I believe is what it is. Yeah, I don't know. I, I'm going to call it the NBA cup. Like that's just too easy. Like, it's much, much easier than NBA in season tournament, which is what it is. But like NBA cup sounds better. It's easier to roll off the tongue. I don't know why we're not rolling with that. They should have like named it after a guy, like name, make it the Stern cup. If you want, like something. make it the Stern cup, make it the Kobe. I mean, Kobe got the, the all-star MVP, right? So yeah, make it the David. And well, let's just say that the Larry O'Brien should be called the David Stern Trophy. He did all the work. <laughs> yeah, fair. Larry O'Brien was just first and almost ran it into the ground. The only reason that the NBA is existing now is because of David Stern. So why why can't we just name the trophy after him? Be easy. Or or hear me out. The first NBA Cup MVP. Name it after him. Yeah, <laughs> risky. There we go. Risky. Now we're cooking. 
but yeah. I like it. Jordan, the Poole. James Harden Cup. It's coming. J- Jordan Poole just wins it. The w- Wizards <laughs> just go on a run. Be sick. Hey, brother, the Poole Cup is kind of <laughs> tough. <laughs> That'd be pretty good. That'd be pretty good. Um, so with the NBA in season tournament, it's a new competition between all 30 teams debuting this season. It's actually starting Friday, November 3rd. You're listening to this on Thursday, November 2nd. We're recording this on Wednesday, November 1st. A little time travel for you guys. Um, so it starts on Friday, and the championship will be Saturday, December 9th. It is split into six different groups. Three groups in the West, three groups in the East, much like a World Cup would be if you're a soccer fan. So I it, I don't remember how the, the groups were chosen. I think it's by record last year. Um, it doesn't make sense. But you're doing group play. You play four other teams in group play. And eight will advance to the second and final stages in, in single elimination knockout rounds. And I think the semifinal and final will be played in Vegas. Dope. <laughs> I mean, if you want to make some shit cool for the NBA, put it in Vegas. Yeah, absolutely. I, that's where the next team's going to be. It's a very easy just... Here you go, Vegas, and put it in the sphere. Put it in the sphere. That's all I'm asking. Let them play in the sphere, Cowards. Let's fucking <laughs> Just, go. It would be sick. Um, I I don't. I just don't understand the point. I I kind of get it. You know, soccer like it's a thing. You gotta you gotta start somewhere. Oh, like, I absolutely get that part. Yeah, but the. Like the, the the NBA regular season, it's gotten stale. It's gotten boring. No one cares. There's nothing on the line anymore. It's like if you get into the dance, you fuck around and find out whatever. But, you know, it gives the other teams something to play for in the regular season. It wraps up in December. And then we just never have to think about it again until next time, you know? Yeah, I think this is what the NBA is trying to implement in order to get to an actual Champions League type of thing mid-season. I think they're trying to figure that out. They they space out November, middle of December, and they start bringing in like Real Madrid and all the teams overseas, like Spanish teams, and then the rest of the European teams that are really good, like Serbian teams, like get Jokic and all these people, other teams that they used to play for when they were like 12, 13, 14 years old playing for yeah. pro teams over there, the Europeans. That would be pretty sick. I think that's what we're heading towards, but I'm not sure. I we just, should we I should do know. that. That'll be the fun. Shanghai Sharks just play off <laughs> against like the Nuggets in the finals. That would be sick. Uh, Stefan Marbury, shout out. I I think that's where we're heading. I think that's why we're doing it. I think I think that would work. I think people would watch it for sure. Uh, honestly, I feel like a lot of the complaints about the NBA Cup so far have all been, you know, people just complain about anything when it first happened. People complain about the play in like the first year that it was announced and then we got to the play in and it was Steph versus LeBron. And everyone was like, I'm in, you know? <laughs> like, yeah. I feel like that, that same exact thing will happen. LeBron will end up in the finals. We know how this goes. Uh, LeBron will be playing for the first ever NBA cup. Probably win it. We'll see who he plays against. It might be like LeBron versus like fucking Giannis and Dame or something. Yeah. At this <laughs> rate, the Lakers should easily come out of the West a group. It's the the Grizzlies, Suns, Lakers, Jazz, and Trailblazers. They'll they'll make it like uh, I don't know LeBron versus some other superstar from some other team, and right. we'll all watch it and we'll be like, this is the LeBron legacy game. And if he wins it, we'll be like LeBron James won NBA Cup, Michael Jordan zero, and it'll go from there. You know? Yeah. So that's West A group. West B group is Denver, Clippers. New Orleans Pelicans, Dallas Mavericks, and uh, your Houston Rockets. That'll be interesting. I think the Rockets and Mavericks play like Thanksgiving week in Dallas, which will be interesting for the NBA Cup game. Um, Then West C group is Sacramento Kings, Golden State Warriors, Minnesota Timberwolves, Oklahoma City Thunder, and San Antonio Spurs. So that's your West groups. That's uh, that West C group is sneaky interesting. It's tingly. uh, Yeah. Obviously, you have Wimby in there. You've got the young... Oklahoma City Thunder, everyone is excited to watch, you know, Shea, Chet, the whole gang, um, both of the Jalen Williamses, whatever. Uh, Anthony Edwards, we're all always excited to watch when he pops up. 
and the Warriors are still the Warriors. You know, everyone's always going to tune in for Warriors games in prime time. Yeah, and the Warriors Kings rivalry. Like, if we get to get two games out of that, that would be sick because they hate each other because they're very similar. One's an aging group, and one's the the up and coming, sort of similar to the very early Warriors teams, like 2013, 2014, maybe. Uh, interesting, and they got a full seven game series in the playoffs last year. Yeah, power forward stomping on each other's chests. And yeah, things. why not? I don't hate it. Uh, <laughs> in the East A group, you got Philadelphia 76ers, Cleveland Cavs, Atlanta Hawks, Indiana Pacers, and Detroit Pistons. Don't care. Snoozer. Don't care. <laughs> East B group, uh, sneakily fine. Uh, Milwaukee Bucks, New York Knicks, Miami Heat, Washington Wizards, and Charlotte Hornets. So two snoozers, but the first three teams – are at least interesting because the Knicks and Heat will beat the hell out of any other team, just like physically. Mm-hmm. They will punch you and and just ram their shoulders right into your chest. They will take your lunch money if you let them. Ask the Cleveland Cavaliers. <laughs> so that one's interesting. And then do we get like playoff Jimmy in November? Like does he just turn into playoff Jimmy in November for an NBA Cup? I doubt it, but like nah. maybe. I feel like if if the Heat somehow made it to the finals of the NBA Cup, then he would go crazy. He's going Hemi. But yeah, he you know he's a procrastinator. He's not doing shit until the last minute. Like <laughs> it is what it is. And then uh the last East C group is another snoozer, Celtics, Nets, Raptors, Bulls, Magic. Don't care. Yeah, that might be the worst group of the bunch. <laughs> it's either East A or East C stinks. The East just kind of stinks overall this year. It's not very interesting compared to the West, which has far too many teams for far too small of playoffs odds. Like, maybe the Mavericks are good. Maybe the Rockets are good. I don't know. The Spurs could be good. All three Texas teams could be like a play-in team or a top four seed. I don't know. I can can tell you that the Rockets, as currently constructed, (laughs) are not good. Um, The Rockets are good capable. Um, you know, they're a piece or two or away, but as currently constructed, they will not be a playing team. But um <laughs> yeah, every Fine. other every team in the Western Conference has a reason to watch them, you know. Even the Trailblazers, it's like you you want to see if Scoot figures it out. You want to see if DeAndre Ayton is a bum on his way out of the league, <laughs> you know. Did you uh, see that AI picture of Scoot Henderson? <laughs> <laughs> AI is either going to completely ruin or completely revitalize NBA Twitter. Like, I don't, I can't tell yet. It's insane already. A- AI has been God's gift to this NBA season. <laughs> I am so in love with AI because I was like, AI is fine. Like, some people are putting out these images of like Mike Wazowski from Monsters Inc. and he's like, on a Sm- hip hop album, a joint, yeah. and then like has a, a drink of lean and all that. <laughs> Is that the double cup? Like, it, it's interesting. And then all of a sudden they start doing these AI for NBA, and I'm all in. I'm all in on it. It's opening night, and they've got Anthony Davis driving an 18 wheeler. I'm like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Like this is fucking funny. This but is for what AI is have, for. for. For those who haven't seen it on Twitter, who aren't active on Twitter, someone made an AI post of Scoot Henderson on a scooter scooting away. So you're seeing his backside, and it like, I I don't know how to describe it other than he like shard himself. But there's like a cloud of farts <laughs> behind him. There's a cloud of farts behind him. His pants are like brown. It's and then the Twitter is literally the tweet is literally just his stats to start the season and they're all just not very good. So Pooh Henderson, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was funny. I laughed very hard. And then also we need to ban Brazil from the NBA. Oh my God. I don't know what Brazil is on. It there, keeps man. going. There was three just like obnoxious posts and I sent them all in the NBA chat group that we have. And everyone, everyone has been yelling at me and I can't help it. Cause if I see it, I have to l- make sure everybody else sees it. That is no longer the rule, man. That stopped being the Twitter rule in like 2020. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to keep doing it. I can't help it. <laughs> yeah. I might it's- make, the Scoot that, Henderson AI just like our thumbnail tonight. It would be so funny. That video <laughs> of the giant wolf like slowly eating, quote unquote. Like I don't, I don't know. Like you can't describe it as eating. It like doesn't eat it. It just it's like sucking it, it's, on it. It's weird. Uh, 
the slob wizard, as uh, that <laughs> one reporter would say. The slob wizard. That is some of the most disturbing shit I've seen in a yeah. minute. On and Twitter. you know what the worst part is? Is that I think they played the Heat that night. <laughs> so it wasn't even like an animal to just like eat. It, yeah, it's very disturbing. It's... Get on Twitter if you haven't, if you're an NBA fan, because that's where the party's at in Brazil. It's crazy. Uh, <laughs> let's move on to the NBA Cup. They uh, Every team's getting a new court. I wrote a blog on ApolloHOU.com, ranking all 30 courts, and they stink. They, they just all stink. And I don't get the point of them. Right, like, like, do people get excited about seeing new courts randomly mixed in? Like, is that like a thing people are hyped about? So last year, the Dallas Mavericks came out with a new court, and it was a little bit gray, had a little grayish undertone with the navy logo in the middle, not the full stupid Mavericks logo that we have. It was just kind of like half and half with navy. It was pretty cool. I was like, that's exciting, a new home court. I like that. That's better than the last one. To get a cup, to get a court for four games or six games this year with new jerseys to go along with them that are also kind of ass. Like the Rockets ones are fine. I think they're decent. I, yeah, I don't understand. I, mean, I don't. I don't get it. And I don't. Why did they go with the like the theme of a big stripe down the middle? Like why? That's that's my problem with it. And the NBA Cup trophy behind the logo too is also interesting. Yeah, we don't need this. This this put, put trophy it in the side. is on the court three times. Put, <laughs> put it on the corner like you d- used to do for the finals. You remember, like early two thousands, mid two thousands, they'd have the trophy in the in the corners on opposite sides of the court. I was yeah. sick. Do that. It, it rules and the big the final signature oh. logo. Like that's oh. good. Bring that back. But yeah, Just I don't absolutely. I don't get the like full color court. And uh, second color that's a, just a stripe down the middle. I don't. Yeah, the Pelicans one is just atrocious. The worst court I've ever seen. Who? <laughs> it, it's so bad. <laughs> who chose that and why, dude? <laughs> like, and then uh, they have like the lime green logo on top of like a lime green stripe down the center of the court. Like that's it's that's so just gross. bad, dude. That's sometimes ass. sometimes less is more NBA. We don't need a New Jersey every year if they're going to be ass. If they're going to yeah. be good, give it to me. But Honestly, even if they are good, like just keep it. You know what I'm saying? Like the Suns, like the, the original, like the Valley black and like digital, like gradient yeah. shit. That rules. Just keep that forever. Like, you know, I, I can't remember who it was on Twitter, but I saw it the other day. As someone said, all right, now that we have like 20 iterations of the city, city jerseys, Let's just choose one, and that's what we roll it for the next five years. Just from pick for one. each team, you pick your best one, and you roll with it for the next five seasons. And in five seasons, we regroup. Give think yourself some time. You don't have to do this every year. Come up with some new, unheard of connection to your city. Because like the, the 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 Houston jerseys, they're they're cool or whatever. It's like a reference to Five Slamma Jamma. Yeah. Like why? <laughs> like you know, like why? Do I don't we know. Have to We're running out thing? of ideas. <laughs> Like let's just keep the one like I like the the pinstripe like the pajama jerseys those were yeah. cool keep yeah. that the Miami Heat you just go with the white Miami Vice ones or the black ones whichever one you like more and then the Dallas Mavericks had two incredible back to back like throwback they had a seventies one last year they had a nineties eighties kind of looking Mavericks with the cowboy hat on the logo yeah. the year before pick one of those and just roll with it for five years please I'm begging you and just pick pick a court. You don't have to. <laughs> you don't have to do this one. You don't have to do the NBA Cup court. Like we get it, it's the NBA Cup. It's an in-season tournament. You want us to care? Don't make us care by making just the ugliest fucking court. It's going to produce the ugliest highlights anyone has ever seen. <laughs> it's it's so bad. It's just so <laughs> bad. All right, zero gravity. If you haven't already, follow us on social media at Apollo H O U. That is our main channel. I'm here with my guy, Dex, and Dex, you know, this podcast is presented to you by Zing Zang. We've already talked about them. We really like them a lot, and the Celebrity Mint, but we haven't talked about Sweet Green, our friends over at Sweet Green. Oh, I love Sweet Green. Sweet our best, the best buds. Oh, it, boy. It's a, it's a problem. 
in the Apollo office. We go to Sweet Green all the time. Just all of the time. The Hot Honey Chicken Bowl, if you haven't tried it already, is a fan favorite. It's yeah. an absolute fan favorite. Hot and Honey Chicken Bowl, the the new chicken fajita protein plate. Yes. I don't know if you've had that one yet. Oh, that's so good. That one's fire. <laughs> and I've also heard very good things about the, the miso salmon bowl. Miso I salmon, bowl. yeah. Yeah, we, we, I've heard a lot of really good things about that one. So if you're into the protein bowls and you're not so much into a salad, you can get some rice with some protein. Like, that sounds good, right? For it's, the people that don't eat green good. things. Don't get deterred by the sweet green name, you know? They have other things. They, they got other things. things. But they they kill it on the salad, too. The elote bowl sticking around. Thank goodness. Oh, yeah. that's That was a tremendous ad during an August. Uh, it, was a little, it was still pretty hot outside, but like, at night, a little lote bowl is still refreshing for whatever yeah. reason. It was incredible. Um, Good so stuff. Sh- shout out to our friends over at Sweet Green. Use the code Apollo H L U five if you're in the Houston area to get five dollars off your first order on the mobile app. So download that sucker. You put your order in and you put our code in Apollo H O U five for five dollars off your first order on the mobile app with Sweet Green. Just yeah. I love Sweet Green. I love it so much, man. You will not regret it. Go get you some sweet green. Absolutely. It's healthy for you. It turns out pretty good. Pretty good. So segment two is the layup segment. Something that's so easy that all you have to do is lay it in. James Harden, uh, once again, gets his (laughs) wish and is traded to the Los Angeles Clippers for a bag of rocks and a pumpkin pie. Yep. And a mystery box. Don't forget the mystery box. Oh, good. A very was, small mystery box. Was it a urinal from the Los Angeles Clippers <laughs> new arena next year? Because there's it, a lot of them I've heard. It might be. You never May, know. Maybe. It could <laughs> be knows? James Harden. <laughs> <laughs> or it could be his beard and he just shaved it off and just left it in a box. I don't know. Mystery or box could be anything. It's his fat suit. That's what it is. <laughs> I, don't, I don't even know what to think about this trade. I don't know what to think about it from the Sixers side. I don't know what was this the was this the plan? Was this the long game? Was this what we were doing? Um, we uh, had to embarrass our franchise for this. Like Daryl Morey, was this what you wanted? You know, when you when you told James Harden, "Hey, we're going to give you a contract," and then you didn't give him a contract, and you're like, "We're going to trade you," and then he like ruined your reputation in the, in the media and in front of everyone, and like now. This is this is what you got for all that. Just keeps happening, and it <laughs> may never stop. Except for, I mean, he's he's not under contract next year, so it could stop this year. I don't know. <laughs> it could be the last time. Uh, it's just baffling that James. Are you Harden, are you having fun, Daryl Moore? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it, did you really love him that much? Are you having a good time? <laughs> <laughs> it's it keeps happening, and he just. He goes to a new team. He, vibes are high. They're like, oh, shit. James Harden playing hard. He's, He's not fat. This is awesome. Making and plays. After legitimately like nine to 12 months, he's like, mm, I don't think I like it here anymore. You're going to have to trade me. And everyone's like, dude, we were just vibing. We were having a good time. Like, sure, we lost in the playoffs, like second round as per usual. Like, it's not going to stop. And then he just wants out, and he was probably promised from the Rockets like a very large sum of money, a max contract, I'm assuming, until Ime Udoka was hired. So that kind of stifled the plans there. I will Uh, say, one thing I have to give James Harden credit for, he has a nose for these things. He's left a couple – like, the situations he's left, it's like it immediately got bad around there afterwards. Everyone else was looking around like, you know what? He's right. (laughs) Like, you know, he left, and then Kevin Durant was like, Hey, fuck this place. I don't want to be in Oklahoma City no more. I'm going to play for the that, Warriors. That is fair. And then he did the same thing in Brooklyn. He got out first, and then and then Kyrie does Kyrie things. And he's like, uh, yeah, I think I was right in that situation. I'm not going to yeah. blame him for leaving the Nets, per se. Yeah, no. Or, you you got to do that. And right. Then, yeah, that was probably a smart move. <laughs> I mean, the Rockets, like, he... He probably waited a little long to leave there, but it was over. <laughs> when he left. Well, when he asked for Russell Westbrook to trade to happen, that that was probably his first mistake. He probably should have been like, "Will you just trade me instead?" Of yeah, Chris he Paul? probably should have been like, "Yeah, it's Chris Paul or me, and I choose 
Chris Paul. Y'all keep him. <laughs> I'm going to leave. <laughs> this is my team, and I'm trading myself. Um, but yeah, yeah, he so, has a nose for these things. So it might get fair. it might get a little spooky in, in Philadelphia. I know they have a bunch of cap space. They are the current team that's like, we have so much cap space. We're going to use it on so many great star players. We're going to get us a disgruntled star. We all know it's not going to happen. And this ends with Joel Embiid also requesting a trade. Like, yeah. That's where this is going. <laughs> em- Embiid is on New York Knicks watch is what's happening. <laughs> Embiid is on New York Knicks watch. Uh, yeah. So Philadelphia, they basically just got nothing. I-, I don't like any of the pieces they really got. They got a first round pick. Kind of. Cool. <laughs> I- we know how much Daryl Morey loves those. It, like they traded OKC's like 2027 20, first round pick, which they don't even have somehow. <laughs> And then gave, Los Angeles gave Oklahoma City their 2028 pick. So I don't think they have any picks until 2030. Seven years from now. So have fun with Kawhi, PG, James Harden this year. That'll be fun. If you're a and Russell fan. Westbrook off the bench. And Russell forget. Westbrook. He's been fun, actually, with the Clippers. <laughs> He's actually been very fun to watch. He, he's doing like the good Russ stuff with minimal bad Russ stuff, which is kind of the best version of Russ you're going to get. Yeah, I'm honestly kind of excited about this Clippers team. It, like, it feels like a like a last dance for like all these guys. It's like if James Harden can't do it now, when is he gonna do it? Paul George can't do it now. When's he gonna do it? Russell Westbrook can't do it now. When's he gonna do it? So, I I like that energy, especially because it's not my team that I'm emotionally invested in. Um, so I get to, get to just watch from Houston while this is happening in LA, and I'm excited to see how it turns out. I feel like. It could. Every James Harden team, you're like, I can see it. I can see it being just fantastic. They just pop off. They get it done. This is the year. But, but, it's James Harden. (laughs) There's always the James Harden factor. And the factor that all of the three, like, superstars that are getting paid big money on that team could just, like, go down for the rest of the season. And we don't know what the injury was. Yep. Like, very much could happen tonight tomorrow night like we're recording this on wednesday at 6 p.m so the games really haven't started yet a a clipper could go down in the next 15 minutes and we would get a woge bob and just be like "Eh, well Kawhi leonard's like gone into hiding again yeah it's like of course he did (laughs) every every single year like there's you know this russell westbrook team like yeah they're kind of good they they might have a little something but paul george "Eh, they might be good they might have a little something yeah yeah but like this is the as, yeah, but team. I'm excited as, to see how it goes. As Bill Simmons says, I, I don't know how can can I see it first? Can I, can I see it? <laughs> yeah. So it'll be interesting if they all play together. I I think it could be a very fun team, like you said, to watch from afar and not have anything emotionally invested in this team. I'm interested to see what what James Harden's role is. Is he just going to be the guy that? plays the whole first quarter while everyone kind of sits the last six minutes of it. And they're like, all right, James, go do things, go fuck shit up, which is what Russell Westbrook has been doing. So yeah. it's, uh, they're compensating with James Harden and Russell Westbrook and they're declining <laughs> non primes <laughs> anymore. So it'll be fun. You know, what's the worst that could happen? Yeah. I mean, honestly, like you have to build in Kawhi missing a bunch of games. You have to build in Paul George missing a bunch of games. So, like this gives you something when those guys aren't there, which is inevitable that they won't be there for some extended stretch of time. It happens every single year. Um, you can kind of weather that a little bit and not just be Terrence Mann and a bunch of dudes. You know? <laughs> like, so yeah, that'll help. It, it's it's interesting. So th- that was our layup segment, and now let's uh, jump into some Twitter questions. I'm gonna tweet it out before every episode. So if you're not following me at Apollo Stony on twitter go ahead and hit that up we've got apollo nba and apollo hou you can find our stuff all over there but twitter questions we got stuff from josh garcia 64 our guy josh he's uh been grinding out some rockets blogs he's been toughing it out watching some rockets games and writing (laughs) some words afterwards not ideal not ideal but he's he's grinding it out but he said we haven't seen a league so strong in years i can't think of 10 bad teams what do you think the draft lottery will look like yeah that's a tough one the league is definitely stronger this year than i can remember it being in a little while 
But I think there's a couple obvious ones who might go into the tank. Um, you know, your your Trailblazers. I don't think they're trying to win. I don't think they give a fuck. Um, your uh, Charlotte Hornets. They, I just think they don't have the dudes, even if they are trying to win. To be honest, um, Detroit. They've got a couple wins under their belt already, but I don't see that lasting. Uh, maybe Cade surprises and keeps it up for an entire year, and he's him, and he shows why he's number one overall pick. But I, I would predict them being in the lottery for sure. Um, I think Chicago is Chicago. One yeah, having a team meeting after game one, <laughs> a no, players a only, only meeting, meeting after game, game one, one is something I've you never. Just, cannot do. never see that you just can't just can't happen <laughs> i think the wizards are really bad even for sure they have pieces that will score enough points to win some games but that jordan pool turnaround three where he turns around and looks at the bench and just clanks it is <laughs> like so much worse than the swaggy p1 because at least the swaggy p1 was like kind of in and out like bounced out Jordan Poole's was nowhere near, and he turned around immediately. <laughs> the one where he's like just casually dribbles into a three and tries to shoot over Kristaps Porzingis, who is like yeah. seven foot two or something. Porzingis just like throws it back in his face. <laughs> Phenomenal content. I love Jordan Poole. I want yeah. more of this. I'm Team Jordan Poole. I'm, I'm all <laughs> in on Jordan Poole. Uh, another one from Josh Garcia, sixty four, is who will be the scoring champ? Ooh. Um, I don't, damn, that's tough. There's a lot of pausing there. Yeah, maybe Shea. I feel like he was pretty oh. close last year. He averaged like 30 a game yeah. last year. That might be a good pick. And I think it, I think it means a little more this year, um, obviously. And, uh, I think he might, I think he might take it. Yeah. He averaged 31.4 points per game last year. So two points off of Embiid's pace, but. I don't know. I think he might. I think he might take it this year. I'm going Luca. This year is the year, huh? I I think he just stays healthy enough, and I mean he's averaging 39 through three games with a 49 point game already. I I think the team's better constructed to where he doesn't have to play as much defense, doesn't have to carry the offense as much, but can if he wants to. Mm. I, I don't know. I just one of these years Luca's going to get it. And it's not going to be a surprise to anyone. So I'm just going to say it every year until it happens. Um, Shout out to Cam Thomas of the Brooklyn Nets, by the way, averaging 33 through three games. That's nuts. All shots, no no passing. Did not see that shit coming. <laughs> um, Justin Mirabueno, JP underscore Mirabueno, host of our Summit State of Mind Rockets podcast on Apollo HOU's podcast network. Uh, how do we feel about joining... How how do we feel about Harden joining the Clippers and why they will fail with him on the roster? We already talked about it. Head backwards, JP. You can head backwards. All right? <laughs> go ahead and go ahead and go backwards. Uh, the Tribal Commish Summit Commish on Twitter as well. His brother Kenny, another host of Summit State of Mind, he asked, "Why is Harrison Barnes continuously underrated as a player?" So I saw this question when Kenny tweeted it, and I started thinking about it. And I think a very, very big part of it is because his name is Harrison Barnes. Like, that's just, you just sound like an okay NBA player. Like, Harrison Barnes. Okay, cool. Like, we're talking about, we just talked about Luka Doncic, Shea Gilgis Alexander. You know, we're talking Nikola Jokic, Joel Embiid, even like LeBron James was destined for greatness. All right. Your name is LeBron James. You're going to be great at something. Harrison Barnes. I work with seven guys named Harrison Barnes. Like, you know, <laughs> or seven guys who look like they could be named Harrison Barnes. That's so great. we just don't care. We're not moved. And he's always been on. Well, he was on the Warriors when they were good. And he was the weak link, the weak link for the Warriors. He goes to Sacramento, which like no one was really watching them until they got Wait, to the to, playoffs. He went to Dallas. Oh, he shit. He did play in Dallas. And then he got oh, yeah. traded mid-game to the Sacramento. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's tough. Uh, but, yeah, he's not playing in these spots where we're while watching him and we're like, damn, this Harrison Barnes guy is kind of good. Every time we watch him, he's either 
a weak link, or it's like in the the King series when he missed the <laughs> three, to the, like went at the buzzer. It's like, yeah. damn, Harrison Barnes ass shit, you know. That that's the long answer. The short answer is he went to North Carolina. That too. That, that's <laughs> literally it. That's all it was. Um, and then Roberto, one of our graphic design guys with Apollo HOU, asked playoffs this year, and he's referring to the Houston Rockets. And I'll let you answer that because. No. <laughs> <laughs> if I had to make a prediction right now, based on the roster we have right now, no. But I do think they're closer than people think and closer than the first three games would say, especially closer than the first game would say. They damn near won the last two games they played or should have won at least one of those. Um, but we're a three-point shooter away still, you know. Not Dylan and- Brooks. <laughs> hey, if Dylan Brooks can keep shooting like this, then maybe we got something. But it's not bad. Uh, we're a three point shooter away, and I think a healthy Tar Eason does a lot for our bench unit. Um, yeah, this, and that's kind of that's kind of where we're getting our asses kicked right now. The starting five, actually pretty good, like offensive and defensive ratings. Net rating is I think like a eleven or twelve or something like that. Like it's pretty good, but our bench unit just is garbage. And uh, Tari Eason will help a lot with that, especially on the defensive end. I think if we get a three-point shooter somewhere, trade deadline or something like that, then we can kind of start to make a move. Spacing is a big issue for us right now. But as a currently constructed, no, no playoffs, sadly. Yeah, so with Emo Yudoka being the head coach of the Boston Celtics, it took him about three months. About the, about the new year, the Boston Celtics kind of figured it out, and then they went on a run. And they were on like pace for 50, 60 wins, whatever it was. The Rockets are not constructed like the Celtics were. No. <laughs> so, it but in the West is just a gauntlet. The so West like, is it's a not gauntlet. Likely, but I could see the team kind of catching on in February. Like after the trade deadline, the, the team kind of starts to gel and they're like, this is how we play basketball now. And they kind of get it and they go on a little mini run. Like they look a lot better. Their the ratings go up, the, the points go up, the defense stands tough but it's going to take a lot longer than that Boston Celtics team because you don't have a Jason Tatum. You don't have a Jalen Brown. You don't have the team construction that they had and been playing together for years and years and years. You just added Dylan Brooks and Fred Van Vliet. So Roberto, I, I don't think you'll make the playoffs, but Kenny and Justin will tell you that. Yes. So, <laughs> Hey man, uh, that Jalen green third year leap, it's coming sooner or later. Um, Jabari Smith is eventually going to be the shooter. We were told that he was, I believe it. It's coming. It's maybe not this year. <laughs> I believe in Jabari Smith Jr. I am very wary about Jalen Green. Don't do this. <laughs> um, we'll, we'll save this for next week. We'll save this for next week. Or next month or whenever you decide to like kill me and not let me have this pot anymore. Um, we'll have another. Well, This will be a full court press. We got to go full court <laughs> press. Be a full court press. We'll, we'll make a rocket segment. We'll do a separate pod for it. Um, this has been Zero Gravity presented by Apollo Media. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button on YouTube, Apple Podcast, or Spotify. You can follow us on social media at Apollo H-O-U. We have a store. You can buy some merch. We got hoodies. We got t-shirts. We got hats. We got all kinds of knickknacks, too. We got, like, dog bandanas. My dog keeps walking around here. Um, she doesn't have one yet, but I should probably get her one of those. Uh, at Apollo H-O-U dot store. And then you can check out our blogs every day. Uh, we're going to have Rockets or Texas basketball in general blogs up during the NBA season. Apollo H-O-U dot com. I'm your host, Stone. We were here with our lovely man, Dex. Yeah, I appreciate this uh, this first voyage with you on the Zero Gravity podcast. What a time. Yeah, so we'll be recording these on Wednesdays every week and releasing them on Thursdays every week. So without further ado, this has been Zero Gravity.